What's up, everybody? It's the Bipolar Prophet, and welcome to Old Ridge Farm and Farming Simulator 15. So you might have just caught uh, my friend Ian Blake uh, driving away with his uh, second load of potatoes. Uh, we settled on a, a number of 70 tons. Uh, that's what he wanted. Uh, he's hauling them off uh, somewhere uh, and dumping them, I guess, uh, and coming back for another load. So you can see I got the conveyor set up over here, uh, along with the case to push the conveyor back if I need to. Um, so in this episode, uh, we've got animals to sell. Uh, I want to sell the rest of these potatoes once Ian is done uh, taking what he wants. Um, and then uh, I've already sprayed all the corn and everything uh, just because, you know, I figured, well, you know, I've done a lot of spraying and stuff. And it was really quick. It wasn't a big deal, um, you know, to just go out and spray all the fields. So we're going to sell some animals. Um, but I kind of want to hang around and, uh, and, and sort of watch Ian do his thing. Um, you know, I know he's not going to take more than he's supposed to, obviously. Uh, but... You know, and, and then uh, we can get on with selling the animals. I suppose what I could do, I could run over and grab the Unimog. Oh, still got a lot of potatoes left. You know, I'm still going to have about 30 tons left uh, when he takes his, so not going to be a big deal. You know, and, he, and I gave him a fair price. You know, he's paying for him, obviously, but it's a, it's a fair price, I think. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into this. You know, again, it, it always amazes me, you know, the fact that he doesn't have any issues driving that uh, driving that old Ford around, you know. Nobody gives him any trouble. Not that anybody gave me any trouble either, but, you know, it was always sort of a, a looking around, you know, looking over my shoulder kind of deal going, oh, you know, is he going to – is somebody going to gonna nail me for it? Uh, apparently, he's put a new motor in it, um, which is really cool. No, don't want to drive under that because I don't want to fill up my uh – oh, I don't have the right body on it anyway, so no big deal. Uh, but yeah, you know, I he put a new motor in it. Uh, looks like it's running really good too. So sounds strong and everything, you know. So that's really cool. Uh, one thing we could do, I suppose, while we're waiting, um, is we could drive over to the lag fields and see how they're doing. Uh, why not, right? Just park on the side of the road here and uh, jump into the lag fields. Uh, I call them the lag fields. Obviously, it's alfalfa, you know. But as with everything that's you know sort of highly detailed on this map. Uh, I tend to get a lot of lag, so uh, let's see, 3 and 5, 17%, a lot of weeds, but you know what, again, uh, whether this gets direct drilled over, whether I mulch it, or whether I actually plow it, uh, if it rains anymore, you know, over the winter here, um, that will be, you know, that will be the determining factor what happens with that. I'm not worried about weeds and things like that, so uh, not in alfalfa, you know. Uh, I'm not sure what field I'm going to cut. I know I'm going to chop one field. Uh, I'm going to cut one field of alfalfa, uh, you know, along with the corn for silage. I'm not sure which one it's going to be yet. Uh, I know it won't be this one. It won't be field 11 north over here just because that literally just got planted uh, a couple days ago, so it's not nearly ready yet. Um, I may, if I'm smart, I may chop field one over here. I may cut field one. Um, Let's see what kind of condition this is in, just to get an idea of what it looks like, you know. Uh -oh. You know, and any bit of alfalfa I can take off the take off the farm will cut down on the lag, right? So, <laughs> uh, this stuff is almost ready to be chopped, actually. So, uh, this is not in awful shape. Uh, not a lot of weeds, so the nutrients aren't bad. Soil moisture is pretty good. So, we may end up a little bit of weeds, but, you, you know, you got to expect that. Um, I didn't spray any herbicide or anything on these fields, so... Because it was alfalfa, so and it was sort of a last-minute decision to um, to chop it, you know. So that's fine. Uh, we could actually probably chop that pretty soon. I have put a call into the major to say, hey, you know, can I borrow your uh, your forage harvester? You know, and he's obviously. I think I said this in the last episode. He's agreed. He said, yep, that's absolutely no problem. You know, I'll bring it down, and uh, you know, you can. Uh, I'll bring down the the chopping head and the uh, the direct cutting head. You know. Um, I'll slip a thousand bucks, you know, and I'll make sure it's full of diesel and all of that. So corn looks like it's doing pretty well. Um, you know, again, I was out spraying, you know, and taking a look at it, but we'll take another look at it again. Um, this is this is pretty close to being ready to be chopped, too. Uh, you know, the good thing about when you're chopping, you don't have to let it go to full maturity. You know, you can kind of you can kind of chop at a stage early, uh, but you know, I want to get the maximum amount of uh, nutrients out of it as I can, obviously. So. Uh, f six and six, a little bit of weeds, but I just sprayed herbicide on everything. So, yeah, that's looking pretty good. So, another, maybe another day or two days, maybe. Um, well, maybe four days, actually, I guess. If I want to get the maximum amount of, you know, nutrient benefit out of it, I can. I should probably let it go another four days uh, before I chop it. So, 
Major is apparently done. Ah, this field looks really good, too. Might as well just run straight through and run over to uh, to field three as well. Uh, the Major's all done chopping, apparently. So, you know, I'm probably the last person on the, in the Valley that's doing any chopping. So, uh, the nutrients a little low on this. But I did spray this, so this should be okay. This field is, of course, going to need lime. Uh, this field... I don't know. I'm almost tempted to grass this field because this field is in... It, it, no matter what I do to it, it's always in rough shape. So, uh, obviously not going to spread lime on it while there's crop in it, especially that it's going to go, you know, for animal feed. So, don't want any lime residue on it. But, okay. Well, those fields are in pretty good shape. So, I think we're doing okay there. I wonder if Ian has made it back from wherever he's dumping uh, his potatoes. Oh. I think he said it's some sort of, you know, some sort of like midway point between uh, my place and his. So, so he doesn't have to make the trip, you know, all the way. And he's got one of his guys at the other end sort of, you know, loading up in another tractor in another trailer. So I will say I was kind of surprised he's using a big, you know, big Flegel Bull uh, tipper. And those are pretty heavy, um, especially when you put, you know, I think it holds 23 and a half tons of potatoes. So, uh, but that old Ford, you know, even when I owned it, that thing would do just about anything. You know, Ian's sent me pictures of it, work, you know, and videos of it working and, you know, hauling logs and hauling grain and everything else. So, um, you know, I'm glad he's enjoying it. I know I enjoyed it when I owned it, so. This, I think, should be his last trip, uh, 23 and a half, and 23 and a half is 40. Uh, is he not back yet? Or did I miss him again? I may have missed him again. Oh. Uh, go this way. I'm, trying to, I'm just trying to do the math in my head. 23 and a half and 23 and a half. Uh, so 23 and 23 is 46. And 23 would be 69, uh, just about, just about. So, okay. Oh. I don't know if he's if he's on his way back or if he just left. Or I don't want to sit around here all day and wait for him. But, um, you know, I kind of want to be here for this process. So, so uh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do in the meantime? There's not a whole lot to do. Oh, one thing interesting has happened. Um, I've got I got a phone call from DeCobb. As you guys know, I sell all my milk uh, to DeCobb. Um, you know, my UHT milk and the leftover milk, uh, which I don't really have too much of anymore because of the calves and everything. But, um, and they have said that they are going to stop accepting UHT milk. Apparently, UHT milk is too expensive for them. Uh, it's it's too much of a process. They're not you know they're not really looking to be in in the distributorship of that anymore. So that presents me with a pretty major problem. Um, to be completely honest, I've been thinking about getting out of UHT milk anyway. Uh, it's expensive to op the equipment's expensive to operate. The profit is not fantastic. You know what I mean? And it's one more step in the process of my dairy that I don't really need to take. So with Cobb looking to get out of the UHT milk business, and they did say they would take whatever I have left. Um, you know, but after that, I'd have to find somebody else to buy it. And the closest place I can find to buy it is about 55 miles away. Um, and the delivery, for them to come and pick it up and then bring it to their plant and, you know, and, and package it and everything, the delivery costs are almost as much as what they want to pay for it. It's not really worth it to me. So I think the UHT milk might be going out. I don't know. Also, I've had a talk with uh, Chad, uh, not Chad, I'm sorry, with um, Nick, my seed rep, uh, about maybe looking at some alternative crops. Uh, you know, you guys may or may not know this, but peas and spinach and string beans, what I call string beans, uh, you know, are, are very lucrative in this area, uh, according to, um, I don't know, my phone's ringing and on the caller ID, it's got my name on it. That's odd. I'm calling myself. I don't think I am. Uh, but anyway, um, but apparently they're very lucrative in this area, so I'm looking at maybe starting to plant those. Uh, of course, that would be a contractor thing, having to bring a contractor in to harvest them, because I'm not going to buy, uh, you know. Okay, give me one second, guys. I just need to turn that off. There we go. Veronica, apparently, who was leaving me a message, uh, some telemarketer or whatever, was very loud. Uh, sorry, anyway. Um, but, yeah, so I would have to bring a contractor in, because I'm not going to buy, you know, a pea harvester or a bean harvester or whatever. Uh, you know, for that. But but we're talking about that. So that's something we may look at, maybe not this coming season, but the season after, perhaps. Uh, in game terms, it means that I have to put some new fruits onto the map, and then I have to uh, modify soil mod to actually accept, not accept them, because it will accept them by default, but give them a herbicide, give them, uh, you know, a PK and an N and all that. Uh, so, you know, it's a little bit of work, but it looks like fun. And the reason I bring that up is you guys may have seen this. I think it's FS2015, I think is the name of the site. Um, 
somebody had released a uh, all the plowger, and I'm probably saying that wrong. Uh, sort of like spinach and beet, and uh, not beet, spinach, pea, and uh, bean harvesters, along with a, a, a version of Bjornholm with all of the stuff already added to it, so that you could just go and try it and see how it worked and everything. The models themselves are not awesome, but it's a neat thing, and I think it would be cool to add to to um, Old Ridge. Up oh, here comes Ian. Jeez, I don't know where he's going, but he's going quite a ways away. So. So I think we'll watch him load up this, uh, and then I think this is going to be it. This is his third trip now, so about 70, 000, about 70 tons. Yeah, I think that should do it, and uh, that will be that. So there's the old Ford TW10 with the brand-new motor in it and all that. Uh, looking good, you know, as you would expect. So he, he's been working the ass out of this thing, excuse my language, from what I understand. Uh, but... You know, good for him. I know I worked it hard. I know it did everything I ever asked it to do. You know, it's funny because it's not really heavy in the front, and it's only two-wheel drive. But this thing would pull just about anything. So, you know, just a well-built tractor, and, you know, and, and I'm glad Ian's enjoying it. So, oh, There he goes, filling up. Oh, going to have a little bit of potatoes left. Not a ton, but a little bit, so that's good. Okay, now that we've watched that, let's jump back in the Unimog. And let's go and get this animal trailer, first of all. Nope, forward. Uh, by the time you guys have seen this, uh, we'll, well, by the time you guys see this, if I could speak, uh, you will have seen the uh, this sort of little bonus video, video that I did, uh, the first part anyway, of the uh, Old Ridge Agricultural Heritage Society uh, Old Farm Day uh, down at the St. Hubbins Farm, the David St. Hubbins Farm. Um, now, here's the thing. I know you, you guys have all been awesome about leaving comments about saying how great it was and everything. Did nobody catch the reference? Did nobody, you know, to jump out of the game, jump out of the character and role play for a minute? Did nobody recognize the David the David St. Hubbins reference? Come on, what do you guys had to have noticed it? I'm waiting for the comment that somebody says, wait a minute, I know who David David St. Hubbins is. You should. I know a lot of you young guys are probably not going to know what I'm talking about. But some of you older duffers like me are going to know who David St. Hubbins was. So um, I'm waiting for that comment. But anyway, thank you so much for all the wonderful comments you guys have left on that. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed that. I will tell you that it was a ton of work. It was more work than I really thought it was going to be worth, you know. Um, oh, hold on. Phone's ringing. It's a text. It's a text from Ian, who's right in front of me. How are you texting and driving? Let me guess, you got one of those smartphones you can talk into, right? Every time I do that, my texts come out and say things like, you know, I'd like to buy all your bananas with chickens. You know, I, I can't use that. But he apparently, uh, hey, BP, is there any chance I can get the last of those potatoes? Um, I'll give you, and I'm not going to say how much, X amount of money. Um, yes. Now, how do I do this? How do I talk to text? Is that what I want? Yes. Um, yeah, Ian, go ahead. If you want to take the rest of them, that's fine. And we'll work out a price. Message sent. Now, probably that's going to look to him like uh, guardrails and guardrails and cheese and what? But hopefully he gets it. So uh, I will give I'll give Ian credit. He's not flying along. So, you know, he's, he's doing a good job. Oh, nope, you go back to me. Oh, apparently he understood because he said okay. Very good. All right, so that's handled. So good, now I don't have to unload potatoes at all. I can just let Ian do it. <laughs> you know, again, I, you know, I don't mind selling them to him. Um, you know, he's uh, if he makes a little profit off it, great. You know, uh, if I make a little profit off it, wonderful. So whatever makes that happen. Also, uh, I've paid off the bank. Well, not paid off the bank. God, that'll never happen, paying off the bank. Uh, but I have paid the bank. It's... Uh, it's sort of, um, you know, ancillary payments for the end of the year. Um, came to about $37,000. I also, uh, because it's becoming a thing, I am. I picked up, uh, Chad had, had found me a, a, a very slightly used uh, Kawiko Twin Shift um, silage barrel, you know, si silage barrel, slurry uh, barrel, you know, slurry tank um, that has the ability to use a drag hose, um, you know, or the, the swing down uh, arms to, to spray the slurry instead of a splash plate. Because um, splash plate slurrying in my area is, is a little 
Uh, it's a little iffy, you know, because I, I spread slurry near houses sometimes and stuff, uh, and the council would much rather me not splash plate spray. So, okay, I understand that. Uh, but so I have to bring the ma- I have to wash up the major and bring that back uh, to um, Chad and pick up a little bit of money for that as well. So you know you can't see the HUD right now uh, just because it's kind of in the way. But um, you know I'm down to about well by the time Ian pays me for this potatoes be about forty thousand dollars. You know so I don't know if we'll be picking up a field or not because that Kawiko was not particularly cheap even though it was it, I guess it'd been used six or seven times not very much you know. Uh, but so, you know, but that's something I needed. So, you know, I, I, I've been looking, you know, online at somebody who might be interested in buying those UHT machines, uh, you know, and I think I found somebody. So, you know, once once the milk's out of them and once it's empty, you know, to be honest, am I going to miss that process? Not really. You know, I, eh, you know, it is it is an interesting process and, and the milk prices are better. But if the cob's not going to buy it and I got it, you know, I either got to look at how slow he goes over these humpback bridges. He is not Mike, huh? Good for him. Um, not that there's anything wrong with the way you drive, Mike. You're just fine. Oh, uh, but you know, if the cob's not going to take it anymore, and I got to truck at fifty, even if I got to bring it myself fifty-five miles, well, it, it, what's the point? You know what I mean? By the time I get done with the diesel and the you know wear and tear and everything, the money I make isn't worth it. So I'll just keep taking my raw milk to the cob. They'll keep buying that, uh, you know, and I'll just keep taking the crappy milk prices, I guess. You know, the only thing I can sort of say is that, you know, my herd is getting bigger. So that's all, you know, it, the, the more cows I have, the more milk I can make, the more money I make, I suppose, is the way you have to look at it. All right. So 16 minutes of basically nothing, of standing around waiting for Ian to come back, uh, you know, texting him and then, watch, you know, driving behind a very cautious Ian Blake. I'll give him credit. Uh, and finally, we're here to pick up some animals. Yay. Let's see. Where are we here? Come on. Where's the hook? Oh, it would be helpful if I had my HUD on. Then I could see if I was actually hooked up to it. Try to do some stuff without the HUD just because it takes up a lot of the screen, you know? Uh, as you guys know, my my screen is not particularly huge. So is it end to take the cover off? I don't think I have to take the cover off, but I know I have to unfold it. So, Oh, here we go. Every Well, you know what? It would have made more sense if I left that up for a minute. Everybody's favorite thing, trying to back in with an animal trailer to this uh, to this particular loading area. I've tried pretty much every permutation. Uh, uh, why do you keep trying to say words that your tongue won't let you say, BP? Uh, every variant of trying to get in here that I can, you know, uh, and none of them are particularly easy. So because, you know, obviously this trailer is pretty long. Um, and, then, and I always use the Unimog, uh, it, which doesn't turn great, as you guys know. So nothing like making it harder on myself, huh? All right, put that down. Oh, there we go. Cows in the trailer. Very good. I'm going to need my HUD for this, though. I'm going to need the HUD for this. So, Okay. Very good. Just for a minute. Oh. That's not a bad day here in Old Ridge. I think I'll leave the, the, cap, the cover off, I guess. Why not? Oh. All right. And I believe we are full. So we can close that back up now and head off to the... Uh, Head off to the slaughterhouse as soon as we go forward. You know, I try to be slick. You may have seen a flash of, of money up there. Um, you know, for the game, I had to set this up. I had to take the potatoes somewhere, right? <laughs> you know, obviously, Ian Blake, you know, is a real live person. Um, you know, you guys, I'm sure, are aware of his YouTube channel, uh, which I'm going to link to the uh, in the description of this video. Hopefully, I'll remember. I hope I do remember, Ian. If I don't, just uh, comment, and I'll make sure I do it. Uh, he's a real life person. You know, he's on Facebook and everything. Um, but I had to set it up so that those potatoes were going somewhere. And I had to put some money in the game so I could buy, uh, you know, buy the Ford and buy a tipper and everything. 
So you probably saw a little flash of money. So that was sort of what the whole text thing was about, you know. But it was fun, um, and it's an interesting thing to do, I think. So now I know Ian's not coming back this way, so I will go this way. GSPP, you want to slow down? You got live animals in the back. Live animals, slow down. Somebody once asked me, you know, do you have a, a moral issue about taking, you know, these these th this cattle to the slaughterhouse? No, I, you know, and 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 I don't. And, and the reason I don't is a because I'm a farmer, because I've been a farmer my entire life. So, you know, I, I've grown up with the with the sort of, you know, exposure to this, that this is part of. Of life, this is kind of how it works, right? You know what I mean? Um you know what these cattle serve a purpose you know and it doesn't mean these cattle these cows serve a purpose and it doesn't mean that you know that i don't you know respect their life or whatever but what else are you going to do with them you know what i mean that's my always that's always the question i get when i get some you know some sort of like environmental you know super environmental person or, or a vegan or you know some some you know just uber animal lover you know the the sort of eco terrorists i like to call them um you know, say, well, it's, you know, it's murder. Well, it's really not, though, because, you know, we, we have we have engineered these things, you know, these animals over the years to serve our purposes, right? If we just let them all go wild, well, then you're going to have cows in your bathtub, you know what I mean? And nobody wants that. <laughs> so, so no, I don't have a moral compunction with it. You know, I take care of them. I, I, I make sure they're healthy. You know, I feed them. They're always warm. They're, you know, they're clean. They're, they're fed and, and watered and everything else. You know, these animals get treated pretty well right up until the end of their lives. So I don't really have a moral compunction with it. I'm guessing that Ian is over there loading because the lag is ridiculous. Oh, that conveyor... Uh, for some reason, causes a lot of lag. I'm not really sure why, but it does. So, I think I'm getting to the point on the map now where I may have got either too much stuff going on, or you know, these textures the, between the grass, which is beautiful, and the alfalfa, which is just amazing. Uh, but you know, I think there's a lot of stuff going on, and I think that maybe I might be pushing my little abacus, you know, beyond its its sort of uh, you know capabilities. So, now, is it cute? It is cute. Very good. Very good. Goodbye, little cows. Goodbye. I think what might need to happen now, though, is while that's going on, I may need to run over here. And uh, is this empty now? Ian, have you taken all my potatoes? You have. Okay. Very good. I don't need you anymore. You can just hang out for a minute, Ian. I'll be right back to you. Is this empty yet? This is empty. Very good. Oh, that's going to load up automatically. Awesome. No, it's not going to fold back up and unfold again because I hit X. No, it's not. All right. Awesome. All right. And back down to the dairy. I mean, to the beef cattle we go for another load. Uh, let's see. Need my HUD. So, uh, yeah, that $111,510, uh, that's not an accurate number, obviously. Ugh. This tree... This listen, council. Ugh, this is the kind of stuff that you know that I need the council to kind of take care of. It's not. I mean, yes, I own that field, but that tree is technically public property, so the council needs to get in there and trim that tree. Because if I do it, I'm going to trim the hell out of it, and I'm probably going to catch hell for it to begin with. Uh, you can see by the weather there um, that we're expected to get a little bit more hail, uh, sleet. You know, it, it really is hail because it's. It's funny because it's kind of warm right now, but it's supposed to get colder. So, um, you know, there's a there's a good chance that it could be, you know, sleet mixed with hail with a little bit of ice, you know. Uh, so I hope that doesn't happen. I, I don't mind so much the hail, although it's not great for the crops, uh, especially corn. You know, if it's big hail and it's heavy, hail can destroy a cornfield in a minute. Uh, I've seen it happen many, many times in America. So, you know, hopefully it's just sort of a light, you know, mixing of, of various precip precipitations. Oh. As you guys can probably tell, my tongue is sort of on and off. It's good one day. It's not good the next day. I don't know. Um, you know, I'm taking, uh, I'm taking anti-inflammatories for it. But they don't seem to really be working. So, and of course, the doctor did tell me, well, you need to stop talking for a while. 
Yeah, you get that I talk for a living, right? <laughs> oh, and Sean Blaylock, uh, you know, you said that you 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 can't really watch my videos uh, lately because they're too long. Well, you know what? I'm gonna do you a favor, my friend, and I'm gonna cut this one short. We're gonna pull back down to the beef, uh, and then I'm gonna we'll make this uh, a, a multi-parter. That's all. I completely understand that not everybody has an hour to sit in front of a computer and watch a video. You know what I mean? Especially if you have a lot of other videos you want to watch, or if you make videos yourself. I know an hour out of your day is a big chunk. I know it is for me. I know that, that occasionally people that I really enjoy watching videos from will make a long video, and I have to watch it in several sittings because I don't have time to sit down and watch it all at once. You know, I kind of like to do, kind of like to finish a job in a video, but I also understand that some jobs just take a long time, especially any job we have to drive. Um, you know, this map isn't huge, but it's big enough that you know there's there's a fair amount of driving involved. So. And it takes, you know, and it takes up time. So what we'll do is this. I will get this thing back into position again um, once I figure out how that's going to happen. Um, and I will call this uh, part one of this episode. In the next part, we will be finishing off. Don't smash into my Ross boxes. We will be finishing off the uh, the selling of the animals, the, the beef and the pigs. Uh, maybe we'll go. I think the trees are ready to be picked now. Maybe we'll go down and do that. Um, Assuming that, you know, selling off the rest of the cattle don't, doesn't take a long time. So. I got a couple of new scripts uh, in the mod folder now. Um, one of them, you may just be able to hear if I shut up. That is the trailer sound mod, uh, which I remember from Farming Simulator 2013. I remember it being a little buggy and not awesome. This one is not bad. Uh, it's not, you know, dynamic, I don't think. I think it's just sort of a, you know generated sound that it that it makes but it is cool it adds a little realism i'm also using the uh are you guys just gonna load up without me opening the door apparently you are well that's not very realistic is it um another two scripts that i'm using that are really cool are the um is that it that's it that's it out of that one okay uh get on with your story bpgs it's amazing how I can take a 25-minute video and make it a 50-minute video because I can never focus enough to make a sentence. <laughs> uh, two other scripts I'm using. The, uh, the raise rear hydraulics uh, when you're hooked to a trailer, which is really neat. Sort of increases your turning radius a little bit. Plus, it's more realistic. And the um, increase RPM while tipping. Uh, a lot of tractors have that built in, but for the ones that don't, it's really, really neat. So, let's see. Let me shut this off. Let me hide some HUD here. Let me get a thumbnail. Ah, that might be a good one right there, right? Right there. Why not? And I'll do my outro. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know it's kind of all over the place, you know what I mean? But I knew Ian had, had you know, texted me this morning and said, hey, I'm on my way. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm not really set up. I had to get the conveyor over there, get a tractor ready, you know. Uh, Phil and, and Perry haven't shown up yet. They had a pretty late night last night. Uh, and the less said about it, the better, I guess. I'll find out when they get here. Um... So, you know, a lot of, lot of little stuff going on. In the next episode, we'll be finishing off selling all the animals, uh, maybe picking some trees, um, and then we'll see what happens after that. As always, guys, thanks so much for all the great comments you guys have been leaving on the channel. It means so much to me. And thanks to all the, and, and, and thank you and welcome to all the new subscribers. The channel's really taken another sort of population hit, uh, population boom over the last couple of weeks, and that's amazing. Thank you so much. If you're new to Farm Sim, maybe you got Farm Sim for Christmas or, you know, bought it for yourself for a Christmas present or whatever. And you like, you know, you like watching videos about Farm Sim. Well, let me tell you, look over on my uh, featured channels list. There's a whole bunch of great Farm Sim YouTubers on there, you know, uh, and, and you can't go wrong with any single one of them. Um, also, make sure you check out Ian Blake's YouTube channel. I will be putting a link to his channel in the description of this video. Uh, thank you for all your help, your comments, your tips, your suggestions, your ideas, your story hooks. Uh, you know, it really means a lot to me that you guys all want to be involved in this, and I want you guys to be involved in it. I love it. It could not be any more fun. This is a great, great time at the channel now, and I really, really appreciate every single one of you guys. Um, uh, anything else? Oh, well, as always, thanks for making me a part of your YouTube day. And this is the Bipolar Prophet saying, see you later.